Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have brought, we have Brian Carmody, and he is a successful entrepreneur. He has a, a, actually amplified his business to three times his revenue. He was plateaued for a while, and he figured out ways that he could actually grow his business and actually reach the goals that he had anticipated in his mind. And he is here to tell you he's been in a lot of different articles, uh, uh, very successful magazines, and he wants to share some of the knowledge that he's overcome in these last years and to show you what you could do with your business. And he also wants to focus on a topic that he feels is very important, and it's resilience. And we're going to talk a little about resilience and why it's so important when it comes to business and in your personal life and how it can affect your overall life. So, Brian, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Thanks for having me on, Stacey. This is a, a real pleasure. I uh, am Brian Carmody. I um, uh, I guess probably the most recent uh, history on me is um, uh, about 10 years ago, I, I took over a, a, an existing manufacturing company. Um, it was uh, plateaued over uh, many years and was just selling into one state. And um, basically within a couple of years, I helped, uh, you know, as owner and uh, president of the company, helped turn it around. And uh, we can talk more about that a bit in a while, but, um, you know, I had some great success there and, um, you know, we tripled revenue and, and uh, made it to the Inc 5,000 list three times and, um, and even went into the, um, the pandemic shutdown um, and came through it without having to let anybody go and still thriving on the, uh, on the end when we were able to open back up. So um and that really does have to do with the theme of resilience and and building a company and and uh, being the type of human that can um, that that has that those kinds of different uh, layers to your business or your or your daily life uh, to be able to handle those curveballs that come come to you. Um, and it actually even my resilience story um, goes back further than that. But so what I do now though is. Um, uh, is help other companies uh, become more resilient as uh, a business coach, consultant, and corporate trainer. And um, so that's how I'm serving the world now. Um, and I started a firm called the Profit Finders. And um, it's been, you know, kind of really my, I feel like I found my calling, um, being able to help people um, who are just feel stuck and, and struggling um, and sometimes it's um, the CEOs and the executive suite. They just realize that they are they're so active in working in their business that they don't have time to really develop their people and uh, upskill them. Um, they typically often realize that you know they may have hired a, a lot of bright, talented, articulate people, but um, in terms of coming to a business with a broad set of business growth skills, um, that's that's a rare mix in, in America. We just don't teach a lot of, of business skills, um, certainly not in high school and in college, you have to really go and look for it. So kind of serving this this group of people who basically have, you know, thriving companies, um, but they they kind of have hit their natural ceiling and want to break through. And one of the ways I help them do that is by scaling the skills in their employees so that their employees become more resilient because they have they just learn more typically it's sales marketing and financial skills yeah um, so that they can wrestle with the changes that happen in business and in their industry you know and I don't need to convince anybody on who's listening that change happens so, so much, you know, it could be yeah. something drastic, like a pandemic shutdown, or it could just be, you know, smaller things like, you know, a new, um, a new competitor has entered the market and they're really changing the dynamic of the way your industry works. Mm -hmm. uh, and it could be, you know, it could be other smaller things too, but it's enough to really uh, make life tough for you. So how do you, you know, how do you adapt to those unpredictable things. It's typically the people who have the broadest set of skills to fall back on that can get through it the, the easiest way. 
I think it's really hard, you know, in our society, a lot of people, you know, don't have those broad skills. You know, a lot of people are, they have strengths in specific areas that they're really good in, but they lack in other areas. And what I found is that, like you mentioned, that with a lot of business clients and a lot of entrepreneurs that I know, the smallest little things in their in their business that go wrong or something happens with the company that they were relying on, all of a sudden it ch can change the whole picture of that company and how well they're doing. And it can just put them in a, in a pit hole within, within a day or two. And, you know, and then within uh, the, a week or two or three or four, all of a sudden they see that they see their numbers start dropping and dropping and dropping. And then the, the stress comes in and then it's like, okay, how do I make payroll? How do I pay this? How do I do this? And, you know, everything starts to feel like it's caving in on them. And I would think too, that's very hard to focus when you have so many different stresses from so many different areas. And especially as a business owner, you know, or even running a company, you're responsible for so many things and you have so many things on your shoulders that it, it makes it almost impossible to really to be, you know, to be able to write, to make the right decisions. And how does a person actually, you know, actually get to the point where they could actually break everything down, see what's going on and then find a solution? Because, you know, it does take a lot of strength because you, you know, when things aren't going right, it really, it, it really stresses people out and, and throws them, throws them off their game completely. How do you get back on the game? Right. So that, and the stress is the is the heart of it, and, and you just um, really hit on a, a good point there. So that the stress comes from in that scenario that you just talked about. For example, you've got a great company, things are going great, then some curve I'll call it a curveball, you know, comes up, right? And all of a sudden, in a few weeks, within a few months, all of a sudden you're headed in this totally opposite negative trajectory, and you're like where did this come from? And, and the stress, what causes the stress is the feeling of not knowing how to rescue yourself really. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and, and that comes from, well, why don't you ha know what to do? Well, because the things that you know how to do aren't working anymore. Right. right. So that's why, you know, that's kind of the value that I've tapped into is if I can show up and, and show your people that, okay, well, you know, did you know that this is another way to do this? This is another way to do this or outside of your, this is my favorite. When we can take s strategies that are working outside of your industry mm -hmm. and then apply them to your industry, even though no one else has done it yet, if yeah. you can make that work, that's where the biggest leaps ahead can happen. I mean, look at historically the biggest businesses we know of today had success not by 5% and 10% increments over doing the same thing that everybody else has done. It's because they took a, a model or a strategy from completely outside the industry and popped it right into theirs and made it work. You know, the, for example, uh, Sears should have been the Amazon of today. Yeah. Sears was the, the everything store. It was. For most of the 20th century. Yeah. All they had, you know, if, but, you know, Amazon said, you know what, I'm going to take the Sears catalog. I mean, not, they didn't do this, expl you know, exactly. yeah. basically they took the, the Sears catalog, they put it online and became, and the rest is history, you know, right. and of course, Amazon has done a lot of other innovative things on top of that. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to oversimplify yeah. the company, but that is basically what happened. I mean, Sears could have been, Amazon in the late nineties, if they had just had the foresight to create an e-commerce situation, uh, Airbnb, you know, they completely changed the the game. Um, you know, Uber and WeWork and, uh, you know, all those types of companies took models from outside their industry and applied it to theirs. So that too is a form of resiliency, um, to be able to sit back and think and to not limit yourself to just the way we've always done it. Right. You know? Um, and for those companies and leaders who uh, find themselves in a, a downward trajectory by surprise, they get stressed out because they just, the, the things that they've always done aren't working anymore. So when I and other 
people, uh, you know, come in from the outside with an outside set of eyes who has worked in different industries and can kind of pollinate ideas from other industries for you. Wow. It's, a, it, it can be life-changing and, yeah. and life-changing, not just for the business, but I mean, life-changing, you know, um, to the point you were just hitting on before how, you know, all, our lives are spread across all these different things that we do. We're the same human though. So, you know, if, if your revenue for your business triples, well, that's going to change your life. Right. And if oh, it, yeah. if it gets cut in half, well, that's going to impact your life too. meaning you're going to take that stress home with you, you know, and that's going to affect your relationships. It's mm -hmm. going to affect your health. Um, so, and I really do look at my, what I do every day from that perspective. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make people's lives better and, and right. yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on business financials and so forth, but that's just the means to the end. What I'm trying to do is, is lower people's, uh, stress level so that they can have more fruitful relationships throughout their life. Um, right. Because I've experienced that stress myself over over my lifetime. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Growing up, and it's like, no, it's a real thing, and I have a very visceral understanding of what work stress, how, however that manifests, can can impact other parts of your life and your happiness and overall contentment and, and health. So, you know, if I can if I can make a business more resilient and a business owner less stressed that person's going to be able to um, go home and, um, you know, be a better partner to their spouse, be a better uh, mother or father to their kids. Um, that that really is what drives me. Right. I, I think you made a, a, you know, you made some really great points. And I think one of them was that what they used to do that worked is no longer working. And I think people get so fixated because they've done it for so many years. And then all of a sudden, what they're doing isn't working anymore. And then they're kind of lost because they don't know what the answer is because they, they've been, they're so used to doing things a specific way. And now it's not working anymore and they don't know what to do. They're kind of lost. And that's where all the stress comes in. And then, you know, they just don't, they, they're, they're just, it's like being on a monopoly board and getting thrown all over the board and you never know what, you know, space you're going to be in. And it's, it's, I, I think it's really hard for people, you know, especially when you've had a steady business or, or it's been rising. And then all of a sudden what you've always been doing is no longer effective. Right. And, you know, if anybody's out there thinking, oh boy, I just hope that never happens to me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> all right. It happens to all of us. It, yeah. it has to. I mean, we are all connected, you know, energetically, and we don't have that much control over a lot of things. Um, right. You know, if if your business has been doing great for you know, and you and you're only doing, let's say, social media ads, for example. Oh, but it's it's working great for us. Well, good. I'm happy for you. But what happens if that social media channel turns off somehow? Yeah. You know? it shuts it down like it's trying to do with TikTok or um you know they change those mysterious algorithms or they change mm -hmm. up an advertising policy or you know it's just or it gets saturated or it gets too expensive you know you don't get to control all that stuff right so resiliency can mean you know don't put all your eggs in one basket you know and and have other you know in the, again as a business example you want to have multiple marketing and advertising and sales channels working for you because if yeah. one falls down for some reason you've got others that are still maintaining you right um, same with your products and or services you know um it's good to be really great at one thing and yes you can have a business that way um yeah. but you know it 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 is more resilient of you to have some other related products and, and or services to be able to, uh, to have in place in case something happens, you know? So, yeah. Um, that's for sure. I I've seen a lot of people do that too. And, and that's exactly what has happened. They, they put all their eggs in one basket and then all of a sudden it's no longer, you know, it's not working anymore because either it's not exi existent, it's, they've changed their, their ways of doing things and their, their ways are not 
co you know, coinciding with the way you need to have things done and therefore it's not effective anymore. And then they're, they're, excuse my language, but they're screwed because now where are they? You know, like, okay, now, now what do I do? What's, you know, with plan number two, you know, you put everything in plan in, in basket number one and you don't have basket two, three or four ready. And it's like, yeah. that's, that's, that, that's going to take, that's stressful. And that's going to take a lot of resilience so you can move forward yeah. and actually, you know, sustain your business and, and eventually hope to grow it before it fails. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a lot of um, people who have a lot of, uh, I'll call it, command a lot of attention out there, just different celebrities and gurus or whatever. Yeah. That that speak to this idea of, you know, burning the ships, you know, let's burn the boat so that you get, you, you have no, you don't have a plan B and you have to make right. plan A work. You know, I, I get that. I, I understand even the root history, historical story of what, where it came from and everything. But boy, you got to really know what you're doing. When you do something like that because, you know, are are you ready? Are, and you know, are you ready to deal with those consequences if something doesn't happen? And and none of this having you know a couple of backup plans, I don't think necessarily means you can't be totally committed to the primary path. Yeah. Uh, I think you can and and should still do that because it does you know to be successful does require focus. So right. I, I understand the the lesson that they're trying to teach. I just I think um, some people um, take it too literally and you know just don't have anything else. Um, there's so many directions we could go on this, um, Stacy. Like like I could tell you um, even we've I've talked a, a bit about like business owners and that kind of level, but, you know, really even those who are listening out there who just they're employees of a company. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I lived through the dot-com bubble, um, mm -hmm. lived through the 2008 recession, 2009 recession, all that. Right. And, you know, I saw a lot of people get laid off. I was fortunate in both of those cases. I, I wasn't, so I, I, I can't, you know, speak to what that means, you know, personally at, at a visceral level, but I, I yeah. obviously had friends that I knew very well that got laid off and, you know, I saw, you know, in my office, I would see people get, you know, literally in tears when they just got the message that they were letting, getting let go. It's, yeah. Um, and it goes back to that stress and that fear that causes that, you know? Right. What I, I started my first um, side hustle in uh, 2011, mm -hmm. you know, just still working in corporate America at that time. And I started uh, writing um, for, at, at the time it was called about.com, mm -hmm. um, property owned by New York Times. And then it's since morphed into some other things. Um, dot, da dot dash Meredith is the major uh, publisher now. But, um, very, you know, Very Well Health is the brand that they use right now. I wrote for them. Uh, Investopedia became one of their brands. I, mm -hmm. I wrote for them too. And um, it just really felt good to to have that second income stream coming in um, to, you know, it just does something to your confidence to, yeah. you know, you've got something else, another direction to, to go if, if you ever needed to. And aside from the safety thing, it actually opened up doors that led to my ability to become owner of that manufacturing company I mentioned to before. Right. Uh, the the fact that I was writing so much about healthcare and medical supplies and stuff is what attracted um, somebody to uh, to approach me to help take over that company and turn it around because one wow. of the products was a, a medical product. So they just, that's how I got discovered. Uh, yeah. Opportunity. So um, you know, we've been talking about this kind of like safety net kind of aspect, but it, it also is, you know, in, in the other direction, it can open up, being resilient can open up new and positive pathways for you. Um, right. That aren't just about rescue. It's about, you know, it's about opportunity and, and those opportunity, that opportunity in that business led me to a couple of other things that I've done since then that um, I absolutely filled with gratitude for, for making those relationships and business partners that I have now in yeah. other ventures that, that all opened up because of that, you know, resilience is, you know, uh, can be an amazing life-giving, um, 
source of energy and supply for you. Yeah, it definitely can. Like for people who, who are going through so much in their life, like a lot of people can't hang up their jacket at the door. You know, they bring home all their stress to home, but then they're, and they're, and I, I see it all the time. They're constantly working, even when they're home, they're trying to figure that solution out. And then they go right back to work. There's no in between, there's no renew, there's no, there's, you know, they're, they're stressed to begin with, they're at their most vulnerable point. And yet they're not doing anything to renew themselves so they can try to build their strength up so they could try to get through the crisis they're getting through. Do you have any advice? Because I'm sure you've been through it in your lifetime. You probably know many people in your field because you work in this field that have gone through it. You know, how do people, what is the best way to, to you know, build that, that sense of resilience? Because you have to have that inner strength. You know, if you're not going to have that inner strength within you, you're not going to be able to get through it. Yeah. Thank you for uh, asking that question. Um, so um, it has, I definitely have, uh, I put a lot of work into that, as a matter of fact, and over the years it has evolved in different uh, more morphized into different ways. Um, in my younger days, in my twenties and thirties, I was, um, uh, I did a lot of reading on mindset, you know, uh, all the typical, you know, authors who have the, all the greats, you know, um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the classics from, you know, the early 20th century, all the way up to the ones to present day. Um, so I've done an awful lot of that. Um, and then, but also over the years, um, it's become, um, my spiritual life has, has rejuvenated as well. And, um, I was raised a, a Catholic, by the way, just to uh, put that out. So I, I do now, um, spend a lot of time in prayer every day. Um, I mean, literally just to give people a perspective and this is not about keeping score or anything. I just am trying to like... Yeah. I wish sometimes people gave me um, more examples of what does that look like? So I'm, tr I'm trying to just give somebody an idea of what it looks like, at least for me. Right. You know, I, I, I say the, our father probably 10 to 20 times a day, just when I have those quiet moments for myself to rejuvenate. Um, and then also um, I've, I've spent a lot of years actually just reading up on um, Buddhism as well. I just, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm really drawn to that mindset and the yeah. experience that the Buddha went through and the uh, realizations that he uh, came to. Mm -hmm. uh, and it it really has helped, you know, some of those principles have really helped me to let go of some things and not be yeah. so stressed up. And, and um, you know, detachment has served me really well uh, mm -hmm. over the years. And then physically too, I've always... Um, you know, found a way to, to physically exercise and, and, um, and rejuvenate that way. Uh, and then for me as an introvert, I've always found just the act of reading. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, um, I, I float between nonfiction work, like all the things that I've just mentioned, mm -hmm. historical, I mean, um, well, yeah, read history, but, um, a lot of religious texts and then also just fiction like novels. Right. And there's something about that. Um, for me, it's be, it puts me in a meditative state just to read and to focus on that. It takes my head off of work, right, uh, or any other stressors, and I'm just focused on the word on the page and what I'm. And it helps to um, uh, quiet quiet the stress, but also rejuvenate um, more energy and reboot up my supply again. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I, I always love I was always fascinated with Buddhism also. And I, I love the principle and how how they have they they have their, their mindset and how they just learn to let go and they learn to forgive and they 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 clear their mind to really and to think a certain way and and how they bring love and gratitude into their lives, which I think is so important too. Cause I think sometimes we we forget about what we have around us too. And I think that's important too. Even when we're going through the tough times and we're trying to be resilient and we're trying to 
get through these tough times of business that are thrown at us, those curveballs, you know, we still have to really learn how to be, ha have gratitude in our lives for what we actually do have, the things that matter. And I think that could actually even add to the resilience because when we, when we have gratitude and we see the things around us that mean so much, you know, because sometimes we, we don't realize until little things are taken away from us. But the, the, the people in our lives or the things in our lives, if we just have gratitude, that actually, I think, will put us in a more positive aspect where that positivity could actually, you know, bring good energy and bring good energy into your business and, and build on your resilience. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I didn't even list in the things that I do. I, um, I also meditate every day as well. And, um, and it's funny, it, most of the things that I just mentioned are all a form of meditation, but I also do the the sit quiet and still yeah. traditional meditation as well. And a lot of times I'm meditating on gratitude and, um, and yeah, it's essential. And, and I, I think I, you know, again, it, at least for me, I want to tell people out there that it's a lot of work. Like I put a lot of time, I take a, a lot of breaks or I take some breaks, but I also, in the breaks that the day gives me when I'm standing in line somewhere, or, you know, this morning I was at the doctor's office waiting for the doctor to come in, you know, like th those breaks too. It's, you know, it's no small thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. To really, mm -hmm. like, I personally have to work on things to, uh, for, for, you know, for gratitude to, to move, you know, frustrations that, that come at me, um, different yeah. relationships that, that trigger me, you know, it's, it's work. It's not, you know, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I, I love that I have the tools to help me work through it. Um, but you know, we're all humans and we all get, you know, frustrated or triggered by things. And, um, again, if you only have a few, tools, then, you know, you're, you know, you just being you're being limited. It's, it's yeah. so similar to the, the, the tools that I teach in business to expand people's ability to respond to change. We have that as individuals too. And if you only have like, you know, think of the, think of a child, you know, um, yeah. children typically only the only outlet they have to manifest uh, or to deal with frustration is what a tantrum right right um to throw something to bang on the floor you know that kind of thing so uh, that's an extreme example right hopefully most uh, most adults um have a couple more tools than that right yeah and maybe it's just two or three but if you have you know five or six they can serve you you know five or six maybe it's that sixth one that serves you best in right. a situation, you know? So the more outlets you have, the more skills you have, even within meditation, for example, there are multiple skills within meditation. So, you know, the concept of, or the skill to be able to recognize when you're experiencing a, an emotion that you don't right. want and to be able to recognize it, observe it, and then let it move on, you know, right? And not, not to, um, to not say I am angry, but to say, oh, I'm experiencing anger right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Watch it pass, you know, and then yeah. you move on. Um, that's a skill and not everybody has that. And, right. Um, so think of how much better you can, how much better you can serve yourself by having, you know, more skills. So that's so true. And, and how we word things and how we actually absorb it into our mind can play such a huge effect on who we are as a person and how we react to things. And, you know, some people don't even realize that, but if we do stop and we practice it and we, you know, like you said, like, instead of saying, I am angry, you know, you say it in, in a tense, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a past tense form where it's, you know, I either I was angry or I'm letting it pass, you know, and, and it's in some sort of way where, you know, it, it, you kind of mentally you kind of kind of see it fly away, you know, yeah. and you're not just, attached to it. You're not attached exactly. to, the, to the permanent identity of it. I am not yeah. angry. I'm I'm Brian. I'm not angry. <laughs> yeah, I'm experiencing anger right now. So it's a it's at arm's length. Right. 
you know, and yes, it's passing through me, but I'm, I see it, observing it. And I'm going to, that puts, that gives me power over it because I can see it. And that allows me to let it float by like a cloud. You could actually use that in business too. When you're going through those stresses in business, you know, I am struggling right now, but you know, it's passing and it will pass. You know, I just have to figure out a solution and then be open to a solution, you know, you know, and I think too, if we realize that everything in our lives, the, the ups and downs that we've occurred, we've always gotten through it, you know, in life, yeah. we've always gotten through the tough times in life. It's just when you're in that tough time at the moment, it could be very stressful. It is very stressful, but you always, if you think about it, you, you've always gotten through whatever you had to go through in life and you right. made it. If you're standing here right now, right, then by definition, you're a survivor. Yeah. You've been through lots of things in the past. If you're stressed out right now and you've got something on your lap that's stressed out, take heart in the fact that you've obviously, because you're here right now, you've already survived a ton of things. Yeah. No human gets to be 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 without going through a ton of things. Right. You've already been through it. This is just one more. This will exactly. pass. Away. You know, that's so true. That's so true. I, I think, you know, it, it's really important for people to really change their mindset. I think, you know, if you had to give some examples, what do you think are the, the best ways for people to build on their resilience to overcome? especially in, in business and, and in their personal life as well? Well, certainly a shortcut is to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And um, and I mean shortcut in a good way, not, you know what I mean? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. like, I, so often it, I, it, it, it pains me to see people struggle unnecessarily when they don't have to, because for some reason they just think they have to do it themselves. Yeah. Um, whether you're running a business or running your life, no one said you had to do that by yourself. Mm -hmm. And the happiest people don't. Yeah. That's so true. They, so, I mean, I, I don't know how I could say it any better than that, you know, get, get some outside help, just someone to talk to. Yeah. Because you know, the act of speaking forth your frustrations will help mm -hmm. you, um, will help some light bulbs go off for yourself. Um, but also the, the listener is going to be able to ask some questions too. Um, and even if they're, you know, um, they don't need to be an expert in what you've been through either. You know, right. they can just, uh, sometimes those, um, um, beginner mind questions can really serve. Yeah. You, well, you know, to say, well, well, why can't you just do it this way? Well, right. because we've never, we've never done it that way. Well, yeah, but why? Right. I don't know. And then you start to realize that you're like, well, you were holding on to something, some kind of prejudice that you didn't, you know, that was handed to you. Right. You know? Um, I've seen that with so many people. They they don't ask for help because they think that nobody can do it better than them. And in their head, they're not. They're like nobody's going to be able to to do it. You know, as good as I am, or put as much care, or they're not going to be able to. You know, be able to accomplish what I I've I've done so far. And they're the ones struggling the most, and they're the ones going through the most. You know, yeah. it's. You know, I will say, um, Stacey, one thing I've noticed, um, and this has been a, a pleasant surprise or pleasant observation is there used to be a uh, lot. It used to be very common that um, in, in my work life and business life, um, pr prospective business owners that I'm trying to help would uh, routinely say, well, have you ever helped anybody in my industry before? You know, and that, that was important to them. Like, have you, ever, yeah. what have you done in my industry? And now it's, it's really becoming very common and regular for them to say, oh yeah, you know, yeah, I, I don't mind that you, you know, you haven't done this in my industry. I, we're actually looking for an outside perspective. Like we, we know we need some fresh eyes on our situation. So, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing that more and more. So I, it's somehow getting out into the consciousness that yeah, 
people are realizing that it's, you know, no, we don't need more of the same. We need, we need true outside observation and perspective uh, to help us. So. And that's a great point because I've spoken to people and I've suggested that people go and get outside help. And they're like, well, they're not in my field. They're not going to understand, you know, and that's their, their answer to me. And I'm like, well, they, they have really good business knowledge. I'm sure they could, you know, give, you know, give you some really good pointers and help you out, but they're not in our industry. They're not going to understand. Right. But, you know, uh, and I'll say to that, and you know this, but I mean, are all businesses different? Sure. But are all businesses the same too? Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a business mm -hmm. is a box with some systems in it. The, right. the business still has to work, you know, the same. All businesses still work the same way. Yeah. Right? So there's that. And then number two, like the earlier point we discussed, you know, the biggest breakthroughs in business history have come when um, a business has taken outside ideas from outside their industry and applied it to their industry. I mean, those exactly. are the biggest breakthroughs. So, you know. That's so true. It, it, it's uh, it, it's so true. Um, I, I think people have to be more open-minded. And like we said, I think one of the things is get out of being stuck out of your, in your old ways. You know, the, I think that's probably one of the the biggest things also. And, uh, you know, if you, if you had to summarize everything we talked about today, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners that you feel would, would make a big impact? Yeah, I think, you know, um, if I, a couple of points would be, you know, uh, get a fresh set of eyes on whatever you're doing, number one, because uh, it could be completely eye-opening and life-changing um, for you, financially, relationship-wise, all of that stuff. Um and and um, secondly, you know, think about having uh, multiple ways to um, to be resilient, you know, in your life and or your business uh, and or your job. You know, right. just because you have a full time job doesn't mean you can't follow some uh, something else that you can do on the side and get paid for it. It will give you incredible amounts of um, confidence and security and, and so forth. Um, and same with businesses have, you know, look at more ways to serve the population that you are serving with new products and new services, that kind of thing. Uh, new sales channels, new marketing channels, that kind of thing. Right. So, I mean, and then don't ignore your personal resilience, you know, it, it, it does. That's why I gave such specific examples before about yeah. what, do is just to give people a picture of you no know, you know every day meditation prayer exercise uh reading if that's what it does for you you know whatever find your own it doesn't have to be my list but exactly find some things that restore your energy um be, you know is you're going to burn out otherwise if you don't have that so broaden those broaden those skills and and um, the more skills you have, uh, the less stress you should d have to face. Right, exactly. Now you've written some really good books. I think. Well, tell us about the books that you've written. Oh, thank you. So, um, and I, uh, I made a decision not to um, sell them on Amazon. I just have them on my website. Um, they're uh, free to download. Um, the website is theprofitfinders.com forward slash books is the, you know, we'll take you right to the books page, but there's a menu, you know, there. Um, and they can just download one of the, the books um, and they can choose from them. And they're all basically um, more, they're filled with stories, but they're more um, skills for mm -hmm. your business. So if you, if you feel kind of stuck, maybe you either have a business or you're dreaming about launching one and, you know, maybe your only idea about, how to promote your business is to do Facebook ads because that's what you see all day. Right. Good news. There's a lot of other things you can do. Yeah. And a lot of them don't actually cost money to do them. So that's what those uh, books are for. Every chapter teaches a, a new um, marketing and sales strategy. That's so. great. Now, what are the services that you provide to people? Cause I know you have different services that you can provide to help others. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I do, um, 
in, in some ways I serve companies as a like a fractional chief revenue officer. So I look at their the larger companies, I look at their revenue operations, which is marketing, sales, and customer support. I help make sure that those people aren't working in silos. Mm-hmm get them all rowing the boat in the same direction, talking about the same thing and really helping companies. Largely the biggest problem that I see is helping companies that are in very competitive industries to stand out from the crowd. You right. know, I help, I help them develop a market dominating position. And then I get all of their people to understand and, and articulate it in a very uh, systematic, you know, a consistent way. Um, so that's what I do uh, as a, in a consulting role. I also, though, um, provide a service that I love doing this one too, is um, it's corporate training, but it's, I turned it on its side. It's not, um, traditionally it used to be, you know, a corporate trainer would come into a business and they do like a half day or a full day workshop and then they're gone. And you hope that your people that were in the workshop remember 20% of it and you hope that they (laughs) implement 2% of it, you know? So what I do is I try to, uh, I've created a model that um, helps move the needle a little bit better in a business. So I meet with, we, we build a group to get, you know, me and the CEO put together a group of people. Um, we come up with a curriculum that they are, um, that they need to learn of the set of skills in marketing and sales to do that. And then we um, put them in a group and we meet um, either weekly or every other week in zoom. Nice. And I meet with this group and I teach one sales or marketing strategy, some a new strategy for them to learn. Um, there's some adult learning theory that um, mechanisms to it. I've got worksheets and stuff. It's not a lot of homework though. I mean, it's the the goal is to run your business. So, um, but we do it a very f- efficient way. It's an hour. There's accountability built in, and um, I literally sit there and and don't just teach, but we spend um, 15 minutes on on the concept and the teaching, and then 45 minutes on application. Okay, so based on what we learned, how are we going to apply this to your business and your job position? You right. Know, we get people talking about that and and letting the group talk about um, their ideas and um, clarifying their questions and and saying, all right, I, I get the concept, but I don't really, I don't really know how it applies to me though. All right, right. let's talk about it. You know, let's talk about it. let's 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 figure it out. We figure it out together. You know, uh, right in front of the group. And that permeates throughout the organization, even beyond the people that are actually in the training group. Yeah. And the training can go on for three months or six months or 12 months, depending on how much of a um, uh, chunk we want to bite into. Yeah. Um, you know, those people end up going into different meetings and so forth with other people. And they're like, yeah, we, you know, we're talking about this strategy in um, corporate training and and so forth. And um, so what if, what if we tried this and, and the ideas start to really you know, populate throughout the business and, and yeah. it makes the whole company more resilient because more people have more, you know, there's more skill, more upskilling going on. So right. that's how I serve people. For your audience, I'd like to um, offer them up today to, um, you know, please go to the website and download a book if you'd like, if you're a reader. Um, but if not, there's also places on my website where you can just um, schedule a call with me and I will... Um, get on zoom with somebody and just help them through with, uh, resilience challenges in their, in their life. That's great. I, I, I think that's awesome. And I love how you can teach in a group. You know, I love going into group sessions where you have a bunch of people because when people start talking and the, the person initiating the group starts to, you know, throw out questions, you, the light bulb starts to go off because then everyone has like sometimes a, a different perspective or a different way of doing things. And that actually might help somebody else in the room that yeah. they didn't think about that, you know? So it, it actually, it stirs the pot up, but in a, in a very positive way. And you start to really learn from each other. So you you walk out of there with like, let's say you have five objectives and you come out of there and you 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 accomplish those five objectives, but you've learned like, you know, 50 different things because of, of the whole group just sharing I, different ideas. And then you're saying, wow, I could really, you know, use that in my in my job, in my uh, business and and so forth. It's a it, it's been an incredible experience because um for for those reasons as well as um the retention uh, for businesses too, because now people feel like, oh wow, my company's actually investing in me to learn these new new skills. So they're yeah. 
re-excited about their job, a little bit more engaged because again, you're giving them new tools to apply to what they do every day. So of course they're going to be more engaged. You know, they want to try the new things that they've learned. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully we're, we're keeping a few more people off of indeed every day who yeah. are out there shopping around for wow, where else can I go get a better deal? You know, that kind of thing. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I've seen people use those techniques where I've seen businesses, you know, they have like a specific, um, you know, uh, 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 job that they need to accomplish and they'll, you know, they'll interview the client and then they'll take that, you know, that interview and they'll play it in front of the entire you know, the the entire staff and then people will throw out their ideas and they will do they will actually strengthen the 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 uh the job that they were hired to do because they have all these different professional clients you know putting their input into this one specific bus business objective that sounds very powerful yeah yes yep. wow so so many different directions to to take this. It's really a, a fun topic. Yeah, it really is. It really is. You know, I, I think what you shared today was amazing. I thank you so much. And is there anything else that you'd like to, you know, tell the, to tell the audience before we go or anything you'd like to emphasize before we go? Um, I would just say, you know, um, that, you know, there's a lot of, um, different directions you can take this, whether you own a business, work for a business, or just for your personal life and relationships. Um, you, you know, if you hadn't given some thought to adding some skills to deal with all the unpredictability of life, um, you know, you owe it to yourself to do that. Um, yeah. It will make your life better. Definitely well. It definitely will. And I, I think this is something really important that people should apply to their lives because I definitely think it could help them in more ways than one for sure. Yeah. That's Thank right. you so much, Brian. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Stacey, what a pleasure. Um, super, super energizing conversation and um, it's such a joy to, to finally meet you in person. Yeah, you. same here. Thank you. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.